With every match, a warrior is born. Step inside the ring. This is the Whip Podcast with your host, devastating Daryl Pace and Deshaun Whip Dog Whipple. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders Podcast, aka the Whip Show. Yeah, we back. And I know y'all saw what was going on last week. Unfortunately, and that's for real, because I didn't want to do it. We've been adding some new content to the show, and we got some new podcasts. And that mother ugh, coach is on the show now. So he has his own show each and every week. So make sure on Thursdays, I guess, you check out Coach's Corner. Um, you can if you want to watch it. You don't have to. I don't care because I don't like him anyway. It's up to you. Boy, he was kind of heated about the man, flip, flop, oh. fly. <laughs> Man, he does not like little dogs, but that's a whole nother thing. But also, I do got another guy coming on the network. He's His name is Joe Walker from thisent.com. He'll be starting next week. His show is going to be called Railing with Joe Walker. He's going to give you a perspective from a fan's point of view about the wrestling business. So we expand the Whip Show Network, so make sure you check it out. If you haven't already, sub us up. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that. Follow our podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, and everywhere else. All right. Enough about that. Well, right now, I'm bringing my duty in the show. This guy's one of the homies for real because, you know, we do this wrestling thing, and we talk to people from all over the world. We're talking to somebody right here in the D, man. Pause. But this guy been doing this thing on the podcast world for a minute. Not only is he is the creator of knockouts and three counts. This man has shown me a lot. And what we're going to talk about today is something a little different. Normally we go, you know, we just interview people and we talk about whatever they got coming up. Nah, this week we're talking about where we both was at in Dallas, WrestleMania weekend or WrestleMania week, really. But no, we're not just talking about night one and night two. We ain't talking about... Austin and Owens, we're not talking about the head of the table and Brock Lesnar. We're talking about everything that surrounds WrestleMania week. So if you've never been, this is your video to watch so you know that you go next week and next year, my band, in L.A. All right, bring it down. Here we go. Web show fans, I introduce to you once again the host of Knockouts and Three Counts, Shout out to my boy Kyle. What's happening, dog? What up, though, my man? Uh, I love the fact that you got our stuff playing in the background, except your belt's covering up my face. What the fuck? I mean, you, I, got you, I got you right here. I got you right here. I want to show my guy J-Bone right there. You see, what up, though? I want to show the other you, Yeah, I'm the one on the show, but let's cover up my face. Ain't we, that about a bitch? We showing no, the whole no. family. We showing the whole family, man. I want to give everybody some love. By no, the way, that's... No, it's all good, man. But yeah, that's right. I am uh, the host of Knockouts and Three Counts, but I can't take full credit for uh, starting the show originally. It was a uh, shout out to our boy, Devin, who was also with me. He is also still part of the show, but he's uh, getting some life stuff out the way. But you're right. You can catch me with J-Bone and Corey every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, by the time this comes out, it will, will have already aired, but you can find us on all the platforms, on all the podcast platforms, all the YouTube you can check us out as we had just were joined yesterday by Detroit Red Wings legend Darren McCarty. So, like Whip said, you know, you can find us in all those same places. Check us out at KO3C Pod. Now, dog, I got to ask you, man. By the way, and once again, shout out to the homies over there, J Bone and my boy Dev, man. But before we and get Corey, to you got to give Corey the oh, love, too. Bad. What up, though? What up, Corey? My bad, man. Hey, hey. And I hope you guys, <laughs> I, I know some of you are listening to the audio version, but if you're watching the, the YouTube video version, this man has an amazing setup, man, for real. This guy, the whole room is dope. I was in this space. It is amazing. It is amazing. But before we get to talking about WrestleMania weekend, I want to get an understanding, man. What made you guys even think of starting Knockouts of Three Counts? Like, did you have a, a, a journalism background? Did you work in any type of announcement? What made you even start this? 
to be honest, for me, I mean, I can't speak for nobody else but myself, but I mean, for me, I, I always wanted to do something in broadcasting. I always wanted to do something in broadcasting from the time I was a kid. Like, dude, I used to watch baseball tonight so much that I could have probably told you the stats better than the people that were on TV. Like, I, it just, it's always been something I've been into. Like, I've always been a fan of, like, documentaries. And it's why I love, like, it's why I love the WWE Network when it came out. Because I was a big fan of all the documentaries and all that kind of stuff. Uh, as far as the show goes, um, so obviously I'm a big wrestling fan. But, I mean, I've been fighting since I was 13 years old. Uh, you know, I took my first fight at 13. I got a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. I still watch the fights all the time. And um, I met Dev uh, at Bailey's back when we used to watch all the pay-per-views there. And uh, I went to WrestleMania 33. Now, that was one of the best experiences of my whole life. Um, I was working at the post office. I was working midnights, was making money, but I wasn't doing anything because, I mean, my schedule was so opposite from everybody else. So, so a lot of times I was by myself. So I just decided to hell with it. I'm going to go to Orlando. I went to WrestleMania. I went to the Raw after. I went to uh, WrestleCon and, and all kinds of stuff. I went to it all by myself. I flew out there by myself, went by myself, didn't know nobody. And it was one of the best things I ever did, man, because like I said, it, you know, I, I realized I was good to be on my own and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, also I had so much fun and when everybody, and which you can now attest to because you were there for WrestleMania weekend, you know, I mean, everybody's there for the same thing. So everybody is, you know, everybody is, you know, there for the same thing. So it's a good vibe. Everybody's there for having a good time, at least for the most part, you know, you can easily connect with people. It's funny with wrestling fans, how that works. Um, but as far as the show, like I said, I came back from that WrestleMania dev asked if I, you know, you know, asked if I wanted to do his show, All Steak, No Sizzle, which you can still check out some cool stuff there. Uh, but um, he asked me to be on his show, and I didn't know that he was also an avid U UFC fan and traveled all over the place and went to a bunch of UFC fights. So when you add the two, I told him, I was like, look, bro, like, I'll never forget. We were at the Buffalo Wild Wings in Dearborn, and I remember sitting there, and I'm like, well, dude, I could get you a lot of people as far as Michigan MMA goes. Because, like, that was the other thought when we went into doing the show, right? Like, there's so many people who do wrestling. There's a lot of people who do MMA. There's a lot of people who do combat sports. But there's not a lot of them that can do both of them and do them well. Either you get one side that's really heavy wrestling and they don't know much about MMA, or you get a heavy MMA and they're not, you know, they don't know as much about wrestling. Or, or, or you get people where... It's just interview, 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 interview. So I just, we wanted everything to be, we wanted to be different. We wanted to be a mix of the two. And that's why we've had everybody from guys on the indies here in Michigan, bringing them up, which we're helping promote a show that's here at Harpo's, which is why Darren McCarty's coming on with us. Um, we've had everybody from the indies to WWE to AEW to Bellator, Ryzen, UFC, all that kind of stuff. But then, like I said, we still get the amateur guys, too. So, like, we you never know what you're going to see. Oh, man, dope. So I want to unpack, because you said a lot right then. But first things first, was WrestleMania 33, was that your first WrestleMania you had ever been to? No, 23 here in Detroit. Oh, okay. That was the first one you traveled to. Okay, okay. That was the first one I ever – I first one I ever paid for and the first one I ever traveled to. Dope, dope. Now, me and you talked about this when we were in Dallas, because I told you, I've actually, and the fans have heard me say this a million times, I went to WrestleMania 3 when I was a little dog, and then I went to WrestleMania 23, but both of them were here in the Detroit area. We talked about it's such a different experience when you make that travel out of the state to go somewhere else to watch uh, and be a part of this WrestleMania weekend. Could you kind of expound on why it's so much different going out of state to do it as opposed to just watching it here, going up the street? Um, so the best way I can put it is, like, WrestleMania can't really be um, compared to any other show, right? Like, it's wrestling's equivalent to the Super Bowl, but in many instances, in many uh, metrics, WrestleMania has surpassed the Super Bowl, which was proven by the social media stuff from this year's WrestleMania. Um, 
when you go there for WrestleMania, man, it's and you're going out of town for it. Like in this case, Dallas, like for me, the reason why I think it's so cool is like having ran the show so uh for as long as I have and been going to these WrestleManias, I get to link up with people from all over the place. Like, dude, I mean, I had friends there from New York. I had friends there from Detroit. I had friends there from Texas. I had friends there from uh, Arizona. We had, I mean, you see so many people from so many places. And, like, that's what's so cool for me traveling with the show is getting to meet up with so many of our guests. Like, the show that's playing in the background for you. You know, we just got to interview Gringo Loco, who... Gringo Loco, you know, is a guy I've been watching for a long time, whether it be MLW, AAA, whatever it is, you know, then when we go to these places, we all try to link up to it, link up with people like that's what's cool about WrestleMania is like everybody's there for the same thing. And again, it's the spectacle of WrestleMania, right? It's not like any other show that you're going to go to. You can't compare it to a Raw. You can't compare it to a Dynamite. You can't compare it to even a pay-per-view because it's not the same thing. The energy is just different. That's the best way I can describe it. So, man. So we're talking about the big, the big show, the big WrestleMania show. But a lot of us have casual fans to watch these podcasts. And we both know about this. There are not only WrestleMania going on, damn near every independent promotion that can afford it does shows during that week. Um, how did you first find out that there were other shows going on uh, WrestleMania week? And the first time, what made you go to that? Because shout out to my boy Shin Blades, you met him. He, went, he goes to WrestleMania weekend. He don't even go to Mania. He goes to everything else, all the other shows. So what do you think about how it feels to actually uh, go to some of the other shows? And like, like I said, how did you even find out about the other shows? Well, when I went to WrestleMania 23, the indie scene wasn't really like that. So there wasn't any of that here in Detroit. But I mean, it was like that in Orlando, but I didn't go. Well, I did. I, I went to I went to quite a few different shows when I went to Orlando. But now, I mean, with the show. WrestleMania is also the biggest place for me to be able to network as far as wrestling goes. Cause like you said, you got all the, all the indie people there. I mean, dude, like I make more connections through doing that stuff. And again, uh, I think a big part of the success of our show is that I, the same person that you see on the camera is the same person that you saw when we went out to go to Wally mania. I show love to everybody who shows love to what I'm doing. And so that means whether you're on the show or not. So I try to go to other people's shows. I try to, you know, I try to go to as many shows as I can. Matter of fact, you and I linked up at the For the Culture show. Mm -hmm. I said before I ever went down there that that was a priority because shout out to the homie Shane Taylor. You know, like I, 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 I mess with Shane and them out, outside of the show at this point. So for me, it, like I said, those indie shows are just as important as many is itself because for me, man, like I like bringing different looks when it comes to the show and all that. But like as a fan, like, OK, Bloodsport was one of my favorite shows of the whole weekend. Uh, as many of you guys saw, you know, Ninja Mac just unmasked there who we just had on the show and we talked about that. Um I'm a big MMA guy. I'm very, very much so a fan of blood sport. So there's, I mean, dude, the cool thing about WrestleMania weekend too, is there's literally something for every flavor of wrestling fan, like literally every kind of show you could want to go to. If you, if you like the, just the off the wall bullshit, there are shows for that. If you like, you know, hard hitting strong style. There's shows for that. If you like New Japan, there was shows for that. If you like Impact, there was shows for that. If you like Ring of Honor, there was shows for that. So I mean, dude, there was literally everything, and that's not even including Wale Mania, which was a fucking blast. Oh man, had a dope man. We had an amazing time at Wale Mania, and we're gonna talk about that too. But you I, and I, I know for a fact. You went to more shows than I did, and because I, I was trying to keep up with you, dog, but you was on the move. You and Devin, I was up till here. four in the morning every night I was Man. there, including the night before I left. So with all those shows, we we talked to like said you just talked about Impact, you talked about GCWs for the culture, uh, uh you, you you talked about Ring of Honor and all the shows. 
I, and I'm not trying to get you to put nobody on blast, but what was your favorite show? Well, matter of fact, give me the top three shows that you saw while you were there. Now are we talking indie shows or what are we it, talking? Indie shows. Like I it, said, WrestleMania it, can't really be compared. It, indie um, shows. Indie shows. Top three? Yeah. Um, so Impact show was really good. I don't know if they really count. So um, Impact like multi. Impact Multiverse, if if we're talking about shows outside of WrestleMania, Impact Multiverse probably was the best show I was at. But if we're talking strictly indie, um, I was a huge fan of Bloodsport. That was number one for me. I got to chill with uh, past guest of our show, Lindsay Snow, who happens to be the only female winner of the Bloodsport tournament as well. So, I mean, it was a banger. Ninja Mac killed it. Uh, Moxley and Biff Busick, formerly Oni Lorcan, beat the living hell out of each other. Um, that shit was a banger, dude. Like Josh Barnett was uh, a banger as well. Josh Barnett and Chris Dickinson, like, I mean, dude, uh, Minoru Suzuki, or no, it was Suzuki and Dickinson. What I mean, and Minoru Suzuki, every time he comes out, dude, just that entrance never gets old. So uh, that was number one for me. Uh, as far as indie shows, number two would be for the culture. Uh, just the overall looks, the vibe, how much everybody was looking forward to it. The matches were off the chain. Um, shout out to Shane and them. I'm a little biased, but I think they had the match of the night on that show. Um, and then if we're going number three, I would say – it would have to be um, probably we'll just lump the other GCW stuff oh. into one because I went to so many of the other shows with them. So the other GCW stuff, cause like some of the shows were really long, but I mean, overall, dude, it was just a dude. I, I did so much shit that week. Yeah. <laughs> like, <you> man. <laughs> Hey, and I want to tell y'all this about him, man. I'm like, he asked me, are you going to Florida Culture? I'm like, bet. I'll meet you up there. I don't know. I'm going to see this hardcore match where they busting each other upside the head with them damn light tubes. I mean, listen, I'm a former wrestler, and even I still was like, damn. Like, for real. It was, whoo. But like he just Shout said. Shout out to Hoodfoot. Facts, man. And they coming to the Detroit area too. Well, they're they're, well, they're always there. They're always there. He's actually on that show. You know, Hoodfoot's on that show this weekend that I'm working at uh, Harpo's, which is what we were talking about with the uh, episode that we did last night with Darren McCarty. So all the more reason y'all need to come check it out. Harpo's in Detroit. Whip, you need to bring your ass down to Detroit. No. You're right. You're right, man. You're right. You're right. I, I don't know. I missed the last DCW show. I don't know what happened. But this one's not even GCW. This is RPW, No Peace Underground, and uh, Circle Six. At, at Harpo's? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me go ahead and look it up, man. Because I, I don't know why I was BSing, man. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but guys, as y'all heard already, now we, you know obviously WrestleMania, the the big night. But as he just said, pretty much every wrestler that is a wrestler that's known is having some type of match on one of those shows. There. I mean. Probably about another hundred or something match show wrestlers. I mean, it, it was great, but you know, you talked about well, it already. Go ahead, go ahead. The, well, all I was gonna say is the cool thing too is like with all those companies coming there, WrestleMania weekend has become as big of a destination for indie people to wrestle on as it is the people that are on WrestleMania because it's a. I mean, where else are you gonna go that you're gonna have all the eyes on you in one place? Facts, facts. And, yo, this is no cap. When he said them people know him, we standing, I'm thinking I know a few people. They walking up to him like, hey, Kyle, hey, damn, come here. I'm like, okay, I, who is Whip? Whip ain't nobody here. That's fine. No, but real, man, that's what's up. He got a lot of love, man, for real. But let's 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 talk about it since you brought it up. We went to go to Wale Mania, man. And... <laughs> I've heard about Wale Mania for years. I've always wanted to go. And, you know, I like Wale's music. It's cool and all. But, you know, I never kind of got a true understanding of what it was. I'm like, is it a concert? Is it a wrestle show? So I said, I got to make sure I go. And it was at the House of Blues. Great venue, by the way, in Dallas. Great venue. 
I want you to talk a little bit first, because I know you got there a little late. So you didn't get to see this. So fans, I want you to understand what was going on. I walked through the door. I see the street prophets doing karaoke to a Jackson 5 song. So you can imagine how the Red Solo Cups is going up, man. They had a ball. Uh, we saw what? Almost do what? He did Jay-Z. What did he do? Not, uh, dirt off your shoulder or something? Carry yeah, a big yeah. Ovis, You know, but I want you to tell them a little bit about how dope Wale Mania was, man. Wale Mania was the shit. Uh, I've been meaning to go to that the last few times I've went to WrestleMania. Obviously, this was... That was what was, I think, one of the cooler things about this WrestleMania weekend for me versus uh, some of the other ones. Um, this was Devin's first WrestleMania weekend, too. So, like, he was getting to experience all this stuff. And, like, for those of you who watch our show or listen to our show, thank you, first of all. But uh, Dev, as you know, doesn't uh, really mess with WWE like that, except I was able to get him a ticket for night one. So he kind of had no choice. So Dev was with us and uh, getting to have him there. He was like, we're going to Wally Mania. I was like, all right, dude. I mean, I've been saying I was going to go for the longest time. And so to go there, dude, and like knowing that Shane and all the guys from STP were there. And I mean, bro, like, I mean, when you think about it, we essentially got a five-star concert on top of all the other stuff, except for the fact that they were jacking for them beers. Though. Oh, man. Uh, Man, but, uh, I mean, you had Benny the Butcher came through there and performed. You had uh, um, uh, West Side Gun come through there. You had, uh, you know, you had Wale do a set and make us all jealous with Jade Cargill. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, Don't it was forget. a damn good time. Don't forget our boy Swerve and Montezzi, man. Got to see a lot. Of I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that next. I mean, TZ is a multiple time past guest of the show. It was dope to finally get to see him perform um, in person and see him do his thing with Swerve. Because when I got that tattoo done uh, for the show, which is now the sign that's behind us, that actually comes from Lindsay Snow who when we were there swerve was with us when i got the tattoo so like to see them do their thing in person uh was dope you know i mean like i said i've known tz for a little while now to get to meet him in person you know for the first time you know that's the thing pandemic made a lot of these shows to where you're doing them all virtual so again getting to go there and see so many people and link up with so many people dude it, it was dope, dude. I, it's definitely put it this way. It's definitely become a permanent staple of my mania week. That's what's up, man. And like you said, another thing I want to touch on right quick before we go to a move forward with Wale Mania and even just a lot of the events, you got to see and hang out with these people. They became real people to us. You know what I'm saying? They're not just, you saw, You know, we see the personalities, we see the characters on television. But seeing them interact, seeing them drink, seeing them be blowed, and I know some of the stuff they talked about at Wale Mania, even on stage, we're going to keep it, we ain't trying to get nobody in trouble. But the point is, just seeing them in real life, I mean, fans, again, if you ever get this opportunity, you want to make sure you go to WrestleMania week. But another big event they had going on there was WrestleCon. Now, I know you was on a move. Did you ever actually get to stop in WrestleCon or no? I was in the WrestleCon hotel, but I never, so that was where the multiverse thing was, but I never really got to go through WrestleCon. I intended to, but so WrestleCon is dope, right? Like, but it, I feel like WrestleCon, you almost got to know who you're going for because otherwise it just becomes into like a money funnel because <laughs> you got to pay everybody for a fucking picture. And I ain't mad at you, big dog. Get your money, and I'm not ever going to get in the way of somebody making their money. But at the same time, like, once you've been a few times, it's like, I, I don't, like, I'll have a few select people that I wanted to hit. Like, DDP is somebody I wanted to talk to because uh, I haven't gotten to talk with him in person since I got to interview him. So, like, I usually, when I go to these things, I have, like, little things in my mind that I want to, you know, try to get done. That was one of them that I wanted to get to do, but we didn't end up getting to do that. But, I mean... WrestleCon is like the one-stop shop to meet everybody you ever wanted all in one place. Absolutely. And if y'all never heard of what WrestleCon is, make sure you follow them on Instagram, Twitter, and everything. It's like a huge three-day convention. Probably what? Shit, 100, 150 wrestlers and personalities are there. At Easily. Least. 
And but he's and right, Virgil. <laughs> and Virgil. Meat sauce boy. But but it's a great <laughs> thing. It's, it's, it's dope because like like you said, it's all it's everybody there at one time. And they also have wrestling matches. I think Triple A had a show there. I know Impact. They did our well. buddy Sam Adonis done done him and uh him and the homies, along with Jeff Jarrett of all people, beat yeah. the shit out of somebody at that triple A show. Man, it was so good to see Sam Adonis, man. Back in the day, he actually came through Michigan. I worked with him for Eddie Farhat's son, and we worked together. And this, and he would always kayfabe us about the whole Corey Graves thing back then. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't really want to, you know, be on because of that. But I'm seeing him grow into all these years later. Such an amazing guy working all over the world. Salute to him, man. I got to see my boy uh, Johnny Bravo. Man, I walk in, Bravo. Bravo, uh, Bob, Bravo flew out on the same flight as me. Word, you did say that. <laughs> you did say that, man. So, WrestleCon's another one, man. Trust me. You definitely want to check that out. Um, the whole Busted Open crew was there. I know I saw Dave LaGreca. I saw Mark Henry and all them guys, man. And speaking of the Busted Open crew, and by the way, y'all, if y'all haven't watched it already and listened to it, go back and check out our interview with Michael Riker, former producer of Busted Open Radio. But, Kyle, we know Busted Open has become one of the biggest damn wrestling radio show podcast probably in the history of wrestling radio podcasting and they had a show the busted open what, what, what did they, they had a name for it busted open pre-wrestlemania party it was, or something it was the busted open party but it was all centered around the roast to david greca and you know while we're doing cheap plugs you know again make sure you check out knockouts and three counts because david greca was a past guest of our show and so was Ryan McKinnell, who, if you hit that subscribe button, you might just be seeing Ryan McKinnell real soon. McKinnell, if you see this, I'll see you in Vegas in a few weeks, homie. You heard, you heard <laughs> that, Ryan. You heard that, man. And, and, and make sure Guns does this, the, 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 the thing right on the producing side. But with that being said, like, so so they're, 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 they're party, man, and the roast. Man. I want you to tell them people kind of what was going on if they didn't hear the roast or they wasn't there about what, what the actual event. Uh, I mean, dude, it, it was just pre WrestleMania party before night one. I mean, got, I mean, they got the busted open nation together. I mean, there was a lot of, I mean, obviously you had bully, you had, uh, Nick Aldis came through for the roast. You had Tasha steel, Tasha steels came through for the roast. Dave's wife got up there and roasted him worse than probably anybody else up there. You know, you had Gabby and Tommy and, you know, Bubba and everybody, everybody from Busted Open. I mean, it, it was good times. Plus, DDP came through there. Um, I mean, good time. Great place. Texas Live was a cool spot. Again, like you were saying, I mean, I was kind of all over the place because I literally went right from the Busted Open party to uh, shout out to our friends at Mission Pro Wrestling. We went over there to go check out our friend Lindsey Snow against Masha Slamovich and uh, or like, you know, like she said, Slamovich. Um, you know, and, uh, Thunder Rosa and Trisha Dora, you know, I mean, when I was, dude, I was all over Texas, except the problem with Texas is Texas is everything is like 30 minutes apart. Yep. Yep. That's man. It's I, I had to rent a car. I went to Dallas not, uh, about a year ago and I didn't rent a car. Man, my homeboys picked me up. I said, this time I got to have a car. Cause I can't, it's too big. It's too big. Um, uh, <sighs> Before we get out of here, man, there's so much more stuff I want to talk about. We're going to do a part two, but I, I also want to talk about this. When y'all come, y'all got to have a schedule because it's literally three, four, five, six, seven, eight <laughs> events going on at the exact same time. Like you're thinking, oh, I'm going to go to this show. And no, they're, they're all, tell them about that, man. How was just so much going on. And you almost have to have a schedule of what you're going to hit. I mean, for me, I do. I mean, you just kind of, we, I kind of, we kind of had eyes on the different shows that were out for a while and just kind of scoped it. Like we're going to hit this and this and this. So it, it, it's a lot different when I go to WrestleMania. Now it's funny. You mentioned WrestleMania. Let's see if you can see it here. Oh, look at that there. Oh dope, man. Dope. Dope. If the hoodie from this year. He had, he had the WrestleMania hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I figured that would be a good touch, but um, yeah, man, as far as schedule, I, Dude, we we usually are watching the schedule, you know, about a month or two out to see what shows are on there, you know, and kind of just piece it together. Now, now that we're doing the show, things are a lot different. Like, I kind of look to see, like, what who of our guests or, like, who 
like if there's people in particular that we want to try to talk to or something. So I might like look and see who's on what cards to kind of base who we're going to be, you know, what shows we're going to go to. But yeah, dude, I mean, there, you could literally go to a show every hour of every day. Like, I mean, I was literally at shows till like two in the morning, multiple nights that we were there. I mean, I, I, Dude, I was out till four in the morning every day. Hell, I almost punched some guy from Miranda Gordy, but that's the time. That's a story, another story for another time. And, and, man, so you ain't tell me this one, dog. You ain't called a big homie up, man. I guess you had. I that. did. I, I, I told you about this. And, 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 he and, wanted to wrestle, and it didn't work out. Good. Uh, and, and you know what else is wild about that? And it's still so much stuff that we didn't get to do. I think Kevin Nash, you know, I know Jeff Hardy had a live concert that weekend. I know. Yeah, uh, we were going to go to that. Our truth he had a, he had a concert that weekend. So, guys, make sure you check it out, man. I'm, uh, I'm glad we got here, though, because we talked about a lot of the stuff going on, and we've also talked about a lot of people you interviewed. And you, you, you've been watching our show as well, so you know this is the segment called The Mark Out Moment. Kyle, you've been doing this for a minute, dog. And now these people are your friends. They ain't just wrestlers that you see from afar. But we still had that moment where we like, damn, I can't believe I'm sitting here kicking it with such and such. What's been your mark out moment since you've been uh doing a knockout of three counts, my guy? Um now what are you talking about as far as interviews or just as a whole, whether it been somebody you was uh, hanging out with, whether it was an interview, and they just, you was just in the moment. You, I mean, you stayed tight, but you was like, damn, I can't believe this in your own head. Uh, well, the one that will always jump out is uh, Diamond Dallas Page. Like, uh, I mean, dude, uh, we were at StarCast 3. It was the first big event that we had ever got to go to or that I got to go to where I was credentialed. And we were there with our buddies from breaking down the ring and they had a table and like we first DDP sits down next to us or they sit DDP next to us. And then like looks over, looks at all my buddies sign and stuff and looks over, looks at us, looks over, looks at us. So, uh, you guys are a podcast. So, uh, you going to interview me, bro. And with no with no forewarning, no nothing, I got to interview Diamond Dallas Page. It's there on our YouTube channel, you know. Uh, and he asked us to interview him, and then for me to get him to go for like ten minutes or so with no notes, no nothing, it was good for me to know that I could do it too. So, like uh, interview wise, that one was really cool. Uh, Booker T and Bruce Pritchard were really cool. Uh, as far as moments. This one's a little personal just because uh, my dad just died at the beginning of pandemic. Uh, last concert my dad and I went to was Five Finger Death Punch. Uh, when we were on the way, or we're supposed to go to, was Five Finger Death Punch. On the way to the show, my dad, um, we won't go into the specifics, but he uh, he totaled the truck. He totaled the truck on the way there. Uh, when he totaled the truck, you know, my mom came pick me up. Still went to the show, all that, whatever. It's crazy how life works because a guy that I've trained with for fuck man, I've known that guy since I was 14 and I'll be 30 this year. So we've known each other for a long time. He now coaches Chris Kale from five finger death punch uh, in Vegas. And he heard my show with my buddy when we were talking about his fight in the UFC and said, wait a minute, you guys crashed and still went to the show. And then was like, and, and here's the thing. When he retweeted it, the clip that I put up had nothing to do with the stuff about my dad. That's how you knew that he was watching, because in order for him to have heard that, he had to have been watching for a while. So he retweeted it, and then, like, within a couple of weeks, I got to interview this guy. Now, I've been listening to those guys since I was a freshman in high school. And now we're getting ready to go out to Vegas for double or nothing, and now we're going to link up. Like, what the fuck is life? Like... You know, or even like this with Darren McCarty. I'm a sports nerd, dude. I grew up and watched all the Stanley Cups like that. So now to be cool and be able to say we're quasi buddies, you know what I mean? Like, for sure. Like I said, those those would be the ones that jump out to me. That's what's up. As we back, sorry about that technical difficulties. That's me being cheap. I only got the uh, free version. I'm sorry. I'm cheap. I'm sorry. Whatever. But. 
Carl, before we go, you also hung out with another one of your big homies, man. The boy Mega Ran. Let me know about how that collaboration started, man. And tell me, I mean, y'all did a couple things too. Uh, I saw some backstage pictures and stuff. Tell me about how that collaboration started, man. How you got backstage, man. As far as like how me and Rand know each other, or yeah, like, yeah, how you yeah, how you know Rand first, and then how do y'all hooked up when y'all was at Mania? Uh, so uh, first time I ever saw Mega Rand was when he performed at Madison Square Garden in New York at WrestleMania thirty five. So that was in twenty nineteen, uh, Ring of Honor G one Supercard at the Garden. Uh, I saw him there. Um, we met at. Uh, Starcast 3, same as the thing with DDP, um, and we ended up just shooting the shit outside of ODB's meat truck, and then uh, that's how we ended up shooting the shit, and then, then we ended up getting him on the show, and then he came on the show a couple times, and then uh, randomly he invited me out to LA to go with them to GCW, to a GCW show that was out there, like and I'm like, okay, well, shit, I don't, all right, like, let's go. And so we went and I went out there with him and uh, a buddy of mine now, Derek, who works for Phoenix Sports. And uh, I got to link up with past guests of our show and a good friend of mine, uh, Miles Jury, that lives in San Diego. So, you know, we went out there and did that. And then, you know, we all got hit by pandemic. And then basically, you know, like 20 2021 dude like me and mega ran went to revolution when he did the theme song for AEW's pay-per-view uh i went with him to SummerSlam and uh in vegas in august and then i was supposed to be at wrestlemania last year but i didn't end up going because i had a covid scare um and then as far as this year man like we just have gotten to be cool at this point like i, I just He's just one of the homies at this point. And so uh, we already kind of had that on the docket. He was out uh, speaking as the keynote speaker at a video uh, for video game music and stuff like that at Lawrence Tech. And so, or Louisiana Tech, I think it was maybe. Uh, Louisiana Tech. He was out in uh, New Orleans. Uh, and so he came in Sunday. So literally I dropped Lindsay Snow off at the airport and picked Mega Ran up. We went and had breakfast and then I was with him pretty much Sunday and Monday. And then, you know, he's uh, good friends with Xavier Woods, who, you know, that's um, – so he was part of, like, the rap battles they did against the Usos and stuff like that. So um, he's good friends with Woods. So he invited me to – like, Woods wanted him to come to this panel, you know, and so he got us tickets. And so we went over there, and then we went backstage and said, what's up? Uh, shout out to Tone – uh, Antonio Givens, uh, the NXT uh, social media guy. And um, we went back there and uh, it was Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Zelina Vega, Kofi and Xavier were on this panel. And uh, we went back there and said, what's up, man? Got to take pictures with them. It was cool. I got to meet a lot of people, dude. MVP was MVP was probably the highlight for the weekend for me because I got to sit there and shoot the shit about jujitsu and all that. And then when Rand introduced me, he already knew he already knew who I was because we had met it uh, after For the Culture and shit. So, yeah, like I said, good times. That's what's up, man. See, now I want to ask you to give some inspiration to these cats out here, man. And I know you're doing your thing, and as you continue to grow Knockouts of Three Counts, an amazing podcast. But one thing about you, your ass is not scared to say what up to people. And you don't care who it is, man. I mean, I got that same energy. But a lot of these people out here, they, you know, they want to do the thing from behind the internet. But they're not the same energetic person in real life, man, what would you tell to, to the young folks that want to start a podcast or whatever it is, or even announcing or broadcast or whatever, what would you tell them to, to, to move them forward, man? Well, first of all, it's funny you say that because I do not feel that way at all, first of all. For real? <laughs> like, I really don't, dude. I, I uh, look, man, I, Look, man, I grew up with cerebral palsy and I grew up with Crohn's disease. So uh, I got bullied and picked on a lot. So I've never been the most outgoing or energetic person or like whatever. 
I just have always been what you see is what you get. Like I don't act any different right now than what you're going to see, you know, if you see me on the street and that's the same way I try to treat people, you know, uh, as far as the show goes. Now, I also realize that even though we've built some value to what we're doing, like, always be grateful for anybody that's going to take the time to do your stuff because they don't, they don't have to, you know what I mean? And that's why I'm a big believer in always sharing people's stuff out, all that kind of stuff. Um, dude, I'm not going to lie to you even now. Like I, um, we can put this out now because by the time, by the time this comes out, it's, it'll be out, but you know, we're going to be bringing EC3 on the show Tuesday. Like, I mean, a lot of what I do ends up being from a message. Like I got in contact from them with just shooting an Instagram message. But the moral of what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to be the most outgoing person in the world. But what you have to be able to realize is that if you want your stuff to grow and your show is based on, you know, trying to, and what your goal is, is to get, you know, bigger guests and stuff like that. Ain't nobody going to hype you if you don't. And if you, and if you, you know, if you don't go and say what's up to these people, well, then you can't expect, you know, that that's going to happen. Now, again, I am, I have a lot easier time doing this through messenger too. So let's be honest, like that, that is what it is. But I mean, at, at a certain point, like the big thing I would say to remember as far as all that stuff is just make sure you come correct. Make sure that you show people that you're legit with what you're wanting to do and that you've got all your stuff in a row nine times out of 10 being in a room and being present and being there and people seeing that you're legit and just being yourself will get you farther than any of that stuff. Because the biggest thing is like, like you said, you just got to remember, dude, like what in my case, it's wrestlers and fighters, but dude, they're people. Yes. Like with fighters, it was never fighters. It was never really like that with me. Like uh, if you, if like, if I were to run into some like high name people in the UFC, yeah, it's cool to like, you know, oh, that's so and so. But fighters, it was never really like that for me because I I've been around fighters for 15 years at this point. You know, and some of my friends have fought some of the biggest names in MMA. Wrestlers, I've been a fan since I was a kid. So I'm not gonna sit here and say that there's not times where you're like, oh shit, that's so and so. Or like I said, oh shit, that's DEP. Or oh shit, that's Booker T. If I'm honest with you, Devin helped me out a lot with that in the beginning. Like he's the one that really kind of made some of that happen with Booker T and all that. He's the one that went and said what up to a lot of them. But to be honest, what really forced my hand with a lot of that is once Devin, once the pandemic happened and Devin couldn't be involved like that all the time, well, it was either I did it or they didn't come. So I get it. That pretty much makes your options either shit or get off the pot. See, I'm glad you said that. And I want to I want to believe that put this out there, but I'm put a little secret, a little tad bit in this ear. So I met these guys probably what about a year or two ago. You know what I'm saying? And I reached out to y'all before about doing a podcast. And he was like, Yeah, yeah, but uh let me get Devin, let me get the rest of the crew, let me get everybody else. I'm like, dog, let's go. But he wanted to get the whole team, which I'm looking at it as, you know, he wanted to have the whole crew, which makes sense. But now I kind of understand it's also a thing where you want that energy, that, that whole thing. I get it all. I get it all. I get it all. All right. Now it's time for my second to last segment. You've been doing your thing, and I know you said you've always wanted to broadcast podcasts and everything. But this segment is called Book Yourself. You met all these cats doing WrestleMania weekend. You know a lot of people. And fans, if y'all don't know, Book Yourself is a weekly segment we do where we tell our guests if they could put themselves in any position, any place, anywhere in the world of pro wrestling, whether it be they were announcing WrestleMania, where they were, where they were somebody's manager at an indie show, whatever, what would they do? So, Kyle, if you could book yourself, where would you put Kyle? Um, something that I really want to be doing at this point. Some, so there's two things. Uh, one, I would be doing commentary somewhere, whether that's in MMA or pro wrestling. Um, 
I, it's something I've already dibbled, dibbled and dabbled in. Like I've already been doing commentary for uh, my old college's wrestling team and stuff like that. So I've been dabbling in it. Like commentary is something I'd like to do because um, I just feel like being able to have like the knowledge when it comes to MMA or like wrestling, like, you know, I mean, I've been watching it for years. I feel like being able to know about it, but being able to be an entertaining to it and describe that to the people who are listening, I think is very important. And if the, if that didn't work, um, I've said it for years, like uh, MMA commentary or like being an analyst or something like that, uh, because I'm just going to be honest, dude. Like, I mean, I've been grinding with this stuff for five six years now i'm i'm not saying i'm any great shakes i'm not anything but i would be willing to tell you that i do think that i can uh i do think that i can uh make myself what's the word um i do believe that i can i can, if you give me enough time to know what i need to talk about and what we're doing and whether it's a fight or or a wrestling or whatever if you give me enough time to be able to know what i'm going in there for i, I believe you could put me in there in any one of those circumstances whether it's in wrestling or mma and i believe i could do just as good as anybody else that's what's up man that's what's up and dog i gotta tell you i love the confidence man i i and if we know, and I like to do this on my show, I'm giving you. Only I can have that in my rest of my life. We'll be all right. But, <laughs> but I want to give you your flowers, man, because like I said, I see how you grind. I see what you do, man. And, and you know, one thing that people don't know about this whole podcast world, it, it's just like everything else. It's ups and downs. It's hills and valleys, man. There are shows that that you might not even thought were bang, and they do numbers, and then shows that you like, man, that shit should have been the one. And you look at the, it just. It is it, how it goes, but the consistency to never give up, man. And I, and I like what you do. I like that go-getter attitude that you got, my guy. Um, before we hit the last segment called Ring the Bell, I want you to one more time, because fans, y'all been listening. We we, we still only kind of tip the iceberg of WrestleMania week, but we really want you to, like I said, we want y'all to be there. So save your little money up, whatever you got to do. You got till next year, go to LA to be in LA or the future. But I tell you myself, and I think Kyle could agree with this. Every wrestling fan needs to experience WrestleMania week at least one time in their life. Agreed. Now, uh, with that being said, I want you to, you, you talked about a little bit already. I want you to hit them a little bit more about some of the past guests you got on knockouts of three counts, what you got coming up for the future that you can't release, and uh, and how they can follow you, dog. Okay, so here's the part where I flap my gums, but uh, yeah, so basically, we are we cover pro wrestling and combat sports, but we go all over the place, man. We've had and we bring you a wide range, like I said, we strive to bring you something different than your stereotypical pro wrestling show, MMA show. Um, we've had everybody on there from guys from UFC to Bellator to Ryzen to Booker T and his brother Stevie Ray to Ricky Morton from the Rock and Roll Express to Austin Theory, who you see on TV every week. To uh, we just had Gringo Loco on with us last week. Um, like I mentioned, we're going to be joined by Detroit Red Wings legend uh, Darren McCarty. Um, next week, I'll be joined by Ethan Carter the Third, EC3, uh, before they talk about Control Your Narrative, and we'll see uh, what comes out of that. Um, bro, I'm always shooting shots. It's always kind of just a matter of uh, – who happens where, but that's why you got to hit that subscribe button. You can find us on any uh, podcast platform. Uh, we're on all of them at knockouts and three counts. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, like I said, we do vlogs of when we're going. Um, like I said, I'm getting ready to head out to Vegas for Memorial day weekend for a W double or nothing. Um, I'm definitely going to link up with past guests of the show. Um, Ryan McKinnell from busted open. I'm going to link up with uh, past guests of the show, Gil Gardado, who's a former fighter in world series of fighting. You know, he was coaching John Moxley. Uh, to help him get in better shape, I'm going to go train with him in Extreme Couture. Uh, might run into Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch down there. Uh, and then Gringo Loco's wrestling down there that weekend. So I might run into him too. So, I mean, honestly, dude, I want to hit all the things. But as always, dude, if you're uh, 
if you're out at any of these events, man, and you see us, come say what up, though, man. Like I said, it, uh, same people you see here is the same people you'll see there. You can catch us every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 p.m. Well, like I said, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. Come in, enjoy the fun. And uh, if you haven't figured it out from this podcast here, I mean, there's nothing really off limits on our show. So if you got something you want to ask, drop it in the comments and uh, just be ready for the fire back that comes with it. But no, I'm just kidding. But uh, he ain't hey, joking. Man. He ain't joking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like I said, we uh, like I said, we love wrestling and MMA and boxing just like you guys do. If you're a fan of that kind of stuff, you're a fan of uh, not your cookie cutter interview where it's question, 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 and get into some stuff that you would have never expected. That's the one for you. Not real shit, guys. real stuff, man. Hey, but I got a question for you, right quick. You got that piece on, but you ain't showed it to the camera, man. What you got on that on that neck, man? Oh, dude, I always keep a cross on me, bro. It's, it's always, it's blessed always up, blessed up, man. Blessed all, all, up. Always, always, always got the cross on there, dude. You know, I mean, and if we were stepping out, man, I might have to throw the Mavado one. You never know. You might, you Ooh. might catch. You never know what you might catch when you come out, bro. I mean, this is a little known secret, but there's a reason why. You know, that train used to get me in trouble when I was training at the gym. There's a reason why they've called me fresh to death since I was 14, bro. I'm not kidding. You go to the gym I train at, and it's a it's a, it's a thing, dude. You, and this boy going to say he don't talk his talk. Man, get out of here, man. Hey. See, I can do it. Like I said, I can do it in my own setting, dude. But being able to talk that shit in, in everyday life would be all right. Factuals, man. All right, man. Before we get out of here, it's the last segment. It's called Ring the Bell. That's when you got 60 seconds to say whatever. You can tell them another inspirational quote. Shit, you can tell them what you ate today. You can just talk about anything you want to. Whatever you want. You can just say what up to Dev and the rest of the Knockouts of Three Counts crew. But Kyle, from Knockouts of Three Counts, you got 60 seconds. I want you to ring the bell. But I'm not there yet. See, when we usually ring the bell, that means on our show, that means somebody's saying something about because I was at an event. But I guess we both can ring the bell on this one because we were both there at the event. But, uh, yeah, dude, like I said, if you're a wrestling fan, an MMA fan, Knockouts and Three Counts is the place for you. Like I said, we go all over the place. You know, if you're a fan of NWA, we got you covered. Sam Adonis and the one half of your uh, NWA tag champs, Mecha Wolf. If you're a fan of Ring of Honor, Mike Bennett, we got you covered there, too. PCO, we got you covered there, too. I mean, dude, we got you covered anywhere you want to look, whether it's Impact, WWE, AEW, Ring of Honor, the Indies, a guy you maybe you didn't hear about. And you get to hear me flap my fucking gums without somebody being able to tell me what I can and can't say. That's the great thing about all these things. But, I mean, like I said, man, we uh, I can guarantee you one thing. At least, hopefully, I'll be able to entertain you if you come check us out, like I said, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 p.m. Eastern, because we had uh, – some scheduling issues 9 p.m eastern you can catch us on uh facebook and youtube and like i said man let's just all enjoy wrestling and facebook like seriously or wrestling and fighting like please is it that is it is that hard to do you know that's, that's about it that's what's up man you're right because shit like you said from the top the whole wrestlemania weekend is all of us that love this business coming together and that's a conversation for another show about how we argue about wwe aew and all this craziness we just all love wrestling especially when we got so much of it to consume right now but anyway enough about that kyle thank you very much for coming on the show As a matter of fact don't leave when i hit stop I want you to do one more thing but i want to thank you for coming on the show hey yo fans y'all heard them check it out man not because of three counts podcast you got two, two, two times a week to check it out. And dog got two some time, two time facts. And, and they got some amazing interviews. They got some amazing analysis or his analyses. Whatever it is. The plural verse, you know what it is. Whatever then, fits your pantsy. Facts. But just make sure y'all check it out, man. It's a great show. I'm a fan, first and foremost. And like he said, if y'all see him out and about, he's all over the country with this, man. You're going to see the boy with a T-shirt on. You're going to see him passing out business cards. He might have a sticker, but you're going to know it's knockouts of three counts. And with that being said, guys, thank you for watching each and every week as y'all do. I mean, the, the, the engagement has really been growing in the last couple of months, and we appreciate that. As always, make sure you go check out the other past episodes we had and as I told you, we got two new podcasts on the Whip Show Network now. Coach's Corner drops every Thursday. 
Railing with Joe Walker of ThisENT.com is going to drop each and every Wednesday. And go ahead and get him whatever kind of commentary you want, especially the coach, because he's going to talk a lot of ish. So uh, he wants y'all to give it back to him, man. And check us out, the Whip Show original, each and every Friday. And, you know, subscribe, follow, and give us that uh, five-star thing. That helps the algorithm as well. With that being said, I'm out of here. I will see you next week on the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders podcast, a.k.a. The Whip Show. Take care, guys.